Do you know of any way we could help him? I done some research, but I can't I'm not really sure what would work right now. What have you learned? I mean, it's I don't know how much time he's going to have, but we have time. They, our friend here and she points to Gaz says something about a potion, but he doesn't know what it is. There are some spells. The shaman's told me that there was a potion that can reverse this, but uh, I'm not a potion crafter, so I don't know how to make it. <laughs> can you help us? Um, and she kind of like nods and she looks back at uh, Roxy so that she can. She kind of gestures for you to finish. Uh... And there is some spells, but none that I'm unfortunately familiar with. I never got the chance to learn them. I think I've heard of the things you speak of. Um, I do know of a potion. A potion of restoration. Um, I don't quite know how to create it myself. Um, but perhaps if you were able to get the ingredients, we could find a brewer, someone who makes potions. Might be difficult with yes. people leaving the town. And the spell you speak of, um, I do know of some that can cast it, but they're very far, and I fear that your friend might only have three nights to live. Well, to live as he is. But. I have heard of someone I know who could cast it, who's closer. I mean, I haven't been there myself, but, well, don't tell my sister. But I feel like it might be your only hope unless you find the ingredients quickly. And of course, somebody who can craft such a potion. Um. There's a tomb to the northeast. It, it will not be easy to traverse, but in the forest, it's deep within there. Uh, there's a druid. I believe she could do what it is that you need. Perhaps she might have some scrolls or be able to create one for you. How far away is she? Perhaps a day's travel. So we well, to... one day to get there, one day to get it done, and one day to get back. That makes it possible. We'd be cutting it fairly close, but... It'd Maybe be... we should rent some horses or something. Maybe. Oh, I have a horse and a carriage. Oh, wow. Well, Strength that about fixes chicken. it. Strength or at least tilts the odds in our favor. Yes, it, I, it's it's quite a comfortable carriage. I've slept in it for many, many nights. Yes. Huh? Big enough to sleep in. You must be rich. Yes. <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> no shame in admitting it. Gaz yes, slaps you on the back. I like you. <laughs> now, uh, could you tell us where your druid friends lives and maybe uh, if you have a password or a handshake or something so they know we aren't strangers? Oh, I, they are not a friend of mine. Um, I just have heard of their existence. Um, oh, okay. Through word. People like us, and she kind of looks over at Roxy. We tend to share our knowledge. Um, it comes in handy. But usually, there's always a cost of some sort. Whether it's an exchange of knowledge or... Well... As your friend might know, pretty coin. Indeed. <laughs> well, we don't have any coins, but we certainly can share whatever knowledge they want or perform a mighty heroic deed. I have coin. Heroic deed. He just like he's like, he's. I like say he's still in the back writing stuff down. Like he, pretty much, anytime there's any kind of encounter, he's like, oh, 
like writing small notes. <laughs> yeah, I, I assume you're like drawing out this the like veins along this person's arm that are all blackened. <laughs> yeah, he's writing like, the description. <laughs> Everything can be a composition in his head. He's like, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so with this uh, this druid person, they do they have hours of business? Do they do they not like to be disturbed in certain hours of the day, or is it like you can just come in at any time and kind of like you know pay for the services or you know barter trade? You know, I love this because you're not well traveled, so you don't know. You're just like, is it yeah. like a shop? <laughs> Um, she she looks up at you kind of quizzically um, and a little concerned, uh, and she looks at Roxy and then looks back at you and says, I don't quite know. I mean, I don't know her personally. I just have heard word of the things that she has done. Miracles of sorts is what I've heard. We've had what? other wear sightings around this area and I feel your friend is not the first to fall to such a curse well I hope we don't catch her when on her personal time because that would just be I, you know, I would hate for this like they're off you know and I just don't want them to like have to work because we're on a time schedule and I just hope that we're not being rude to her so and as you say that <laughs> Oh, dear, dear Alexei, <laughs> you are going to be the first to roll, because uh, I feel like you're, you're, you're our, new, our, your, our new companion here. Roll me a 1D 10,000. And 1D. thank you so much, Quiet Geek, for the $15 towards a wild magic. As you can see right here to the right, you can do all kinds of amazing things uh, to donate. Um, yeah. So it's a 1D 10,000? Also, thank you, Mars, for the $1. I'll be adding you to the board as well. Yes, one roll 1D 1 10,000. It's like a lost puppy. It's so adorable. <laughs> it is, right? <laughs> a little heart can't handle it. <laughs> and here we go. Ooh. I'm very excited by Maggie's reaction right now. Oh, my God. I'm quite excited. I'm, I'm scared. How many of you have been injured yesterday during the battle with Uthal. I never got hurt. I stayed out. Uh, <laughs> I, I wasn't know. there. Did I ever successfully get hit? I think I did. I think the only person that got hit was Uthal. Oh no! <laughs> um, Baz, the fight that you were in before, did you get injured during that? Oh yeah, I got knocked down. Like Yeah, so that would I've count. So I guess, uh, and Gaz, you're not sure if you took damage? I don't I don't remember if I actually got hit. I got swung at for sure. I don't remember if they hit me, though. I okay. don't think they did. Um, well, Baz and, uh, and Uthal will both be taking 3d8. Oh, wait. Uh, oh, no. Never mind. Oh, I'm reading this wrong. We'll, never mind. This is easy. Oh, I was like, okay. oh, is someone going to burst into flame? I thought it said that you would bleed for this long, but Whoa. never mind. It's You're going to weep for this long. So, Baz, <laughs> you start just bawling. You get to your knees as you're in this church, and you start just tears rolling down your face. And uh, Roxy, as you're, as you're holding Uthal's head, Uthal just starts crying. This little, this little van form, shirtless is crying and just pouring out tears. Uh, and um, Kathanis, roll me 3d8. Gaz All immediately right. slaps Baz on the back and starts crying again and says, oh, the music just hit you now, didn't it? Alexei <laughs> 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 like, is going to be like, I'm like, I know my, my performance was incredible, but I mean, this is not the right place. He's like rubbing his back like, it's okay. <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing this. <laughs> um, that you're going to do that for nine rounds, which is like oh, quite a while. <laughs> it's like almost a minute. That's a minute and a half. <laughs> yeah. 
I think Roxy's going to be cradling uh, Uthal while this is happening. <laughs> Roxy just starts crying because everyone else is crying. Because she's yeah. empathetic. <laughs> yeah, she's just, I have no idea what's happening. It's a stressful <laughs> situation. I want to say, just looks over to Uthal and he's like, did he, hear me? did he hear my music too? I don't think any of us heard your music. Oh, you must. Um, I've been playing she kind in of tavern. rushes. She rushes over to to check him to see if there's something wrong. I I don't know why. What what is wrong? And she's kind of like trying to figure out what's wrong with your friend as he's bawling his eyes out. <laughs> well, at least Uthal, because if he's in pain, she's like, does it hurt? Like she's just trying to figure out like what's wrong with him. Uh, kind of using medicine. Um. <laughs> um. <laughs> what would you all like to do now that you're crying and <laughs> I'm like saying just like writing down he's like stressful situations people burst into tears <laughs> <There's> no... <laughs> well that is something that happens he's yeah. not wrong well, I mean, yeah no he's not wrong about that at all <laughs> <laughs> music also seems to move after initial playing <laughs> well Harley Quinn's like, he's broken. We need a new Uthal. No. Oh. Oh. <laughs> this one's broken. I love her. <laughs> <laughs> That's not how it works. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think Boz like staggers out the door because he doesn't want everyone around him while he's crying for no reason. Yeah, you, you make your way up out of the pew uh, slowly um, as you we're kneeling down and covering your face um, and Gaz is kind of looking over at you and you're feeling uncomfortable about it and you're like I'm crying in public and you kind of like get up and <laughs> and make your way out of the out of the um, the little church and as you as you're leaving your sobs echoing across the the panels of the of the walls um, <laughs> along with Uthal's kind of melodically uh, intertwining with yours the sad sobs and, and the worried questions of, of this priestess. What's a strange, strange town. Beheaded crows, people weeping at a moment's notice. Oh. Well, she's probably gonna, Roxy's gonna probably stop kind of holding Uthal and put him back down and just be like, well, I guess we have our options if anyone wants to either brew a potion or we go visit this druid. Is there an apothecary here in town? He, he's asking a priest lately. A priest for this. I do not know. For I have not been in this town for very long. Um, we were here to help the church. Okay. Um, so and you can if see we... that it looks like. Um, for probably only Roxy. I think you're the only one that maybe has gone to the church uh, here. Uh, maybe Baz, but Baz is kind of creating his own religion, so may maybe not. Um, I'll let radical. him decide on that front. But Roxy for sure has been in here before. Um, that uh, stained glass window was not as pristine as it is now. Um, it does look like someone is coming in here and kind of cleaning things up uh, from the first time that you came in here when you were uh, bringing um, Uthal there and from the times before when you came there to pray before you went to sleep at night. I think Boz probably has been here, actually. I think he's been, like, asking things about Helm and all that because he wasn't very knowledgeable about religion in the first place. <laughs> so. He's like, I'm going to make my own. <laughs> Oh, yeah, actually, I wanted to ask you about the so like the deities you are using. So I had a certain deity in mind. I was going to have him like uh, my guy worship. It's like what deities are you all using again? What what? What deities are you all using again? Like what gods? Oh, deities. Yeah. Um, D and D's. If if it, whatever you're looking for, we'll we'll roll with it. I'm not picky. This is all for funsies anyway. Okay. I'm so if there's to a find... specific deity that you would like to follow, we'll make it happen trying to find the name but just I did not generic uh i've been rolling with generic D, &D 5e uh, deities for the most part uh, i so, think it yeah, was... is part of my religion thing because yeah. i believe well, he was sent by him yeah then you then you would have noticed that um yeah, yeah. it does kind of look like someone has been cleaning up in here yeah because i know you 
asked uh, Roxy what what her god was cuz that was after she had a talk with Arnold. Mhm. Yeah. I think it was uh I don't want to say Brancala, the god of music. Oh, that makes sense. It doesn't matter. Um is there anything else that you guys would want to do? Oh, you you asked her if she had um, heard of uh, yeah, apothecary. apothecary or something, and she said she didn't know, as she hasn't been in the town for very long. Well, and if... Gaz actually knows this because Gaz was the one who was traveling with her and her sister. That's true. Oh, so th- th- there definitely is no apothecary in this town. No, he just knows that the woman is not lying about not ha- oh, not okay. having been there for very long. I mean, he hasn't told you that, but Gaz would yeah. know this. Um, she, uh, she's not lying. She's she's only been in the town for like a day or something. Two days? I don't know how long you've been in the town. Not long. Yeah, like two or three days. It has not been very long. I'm still yeah. sobbing, but once <laughs> that's over and we get to strategizing again, I'll tell everyone everything I know. I was gonna say, well, we can. Uh, I, I'm I'm not to brag, but I'm quite charismatic, and I can talk to people, find out if there's an apothecary in town, if we can get a discount, if they have exactly what we need. Or we can go find this druid lady and hope we don't disturb her in her time off. I think immediately after that, you just hear Boz from outside. (laughs) 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 Look in the direction of Baz. And then Uthal is laying there in in Roxy's arms. Just like... (laughs) Like slowly, like, but his eyes are closed and tears are just running down his face down the sides. Alexis kind of like still smiling, looking about, but he goes and hands a handkerchief to Roxy so he can dab some tears off of with all his face. She, Roxy. She, she. Sorry, she. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Roxy, Roxy. she's going to just. <laughs> uh, she's, yeah, she's just going to wipe tears off with all his face. Yeah. Oh, you're patting his face. Well, and then tears just keep coming down. The sobbing yeah. continues. <laughs> no idea it's the endless stream of tears <laughs> it's like weird te- they're like different uh they look different because he's a like he's a rock creature so his tears don't look like just watery tears like human tears i'm kind of cr- well, well, sorry, what is Uthal? because i don't know he's, he's a, a goliath a goliath. A goliath. Oh, okay but he's currently he looks like a halfling to you okay. he got polymorphed yeah, but his tears look uh, weird. Okay. But you might think that it's just because of curse. Roxy would probably know that it's not. Yeah. It's poor Goliath. <laughs> poor Goliath. I know he's he can never <laughs> stay in his nat- natural form. <laughs> probably he good won't... that he's a halfling this time because you guys had to carry him. <laughs> Yeah, no, Roxy wouldn't have not been able to do it. She would have probably been, like, on the ground crawling, trying to lift him. Drag him him and his heavy (laughs) ass around. (laughs) It would have been weird. So, um, so what do you all want to do? Do you want to... I don't know why I'm changing accents now. Um, (laughs) 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 do you all want to go around and find, um, an apothecary, or do you want to go and talk to the druid lady? Well, it seems like we're going to have to decide something quickly. Because whatever route we take, we're going to have to stick with it. I don't care. You guys decide. Hmm. Sitting there, like, just looking at the distance, like, hmm. Well, this totally is not biased whatsoever, but I think the best way is to go to the druid and talk to her. All right, let's go. Um, and as you <laughs> say that, uh, the the lady who's like tending to Uthal looks up and, and says, just be careful. It's, well, I've heard stories. The forest is a dangerous place. Did I come through the forest or not? You were on a, tra- a, a road that is very traveled, um, okay. but you did past the forest and at one point it like disappeared and yeah, then there's was nothing invisible. yeah <laughs> yeah and then like came back slowly um little bits and pieces here but yeah it did parts of it did kind of look spooky you did hear weird noises you saw weird things in the sky you saw dead animals without heads it, there was definitely some strange things along the way well i think 
I don't know these people, but based on the painting that is made by the magnificent Bob Ross on the wall in the inn, I'm pretty sure we'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> Someone should really go check on him. <laughs> well, uh, you just hear Bell <laughs> crying as well inside. <laughs> <laughs> Is that gross cry? Yeah. It's not like, running not, down. Yeah, it's not coming down. Yeah, oh we all God. felt the same thing. Oh, that would really suck with the iron mask. Yeah. Oh, oh no! Oh. Ew. Ew. I was having a bad time, guys. So is the plan Seven. to go to the to the druids? The yes. tomb. Yes. The tomb or tomb where uh, supposedly there is yeah. a druid. Okay. Yeah. Is the plan to take your carriage? Yes. Alexei? All right, um, we're going to fast forward a little bit due to time. Um, and we'll say that you get your car or your carriage and your horse and um, the stableman kind of helps you put it back together. Um, as you're as he's getting that ready, you guys prepare for your journey, get your rations and everything in um, order. If there's something specific you'd like to purchase, let me know. Otherwise, I'm just going to assume whatever's on your character sheets is what you're going forward with. Um, maybe you go back to your room to go grab some stuff from the inn. Because I'm assuming you don't carry everything around with you all the time. Uh, you guys kind of pack everything up and head off on your way. Um, is there anything that you guys would I, like to get before you head out? Um, I think Roxy would, A, like to get that staff that she got a while back and never identified. And I think she would actually try to go out and get some armor and weapons since her stuff kind of is in the woods somewhere. Because she exploded. Oh, that's right. Um, <laughs> so, for your staff, you can definitely go grab the staff. Um, it's in your room. So, uh, you go grab the staff. Are you trying to identify the staff? Uh, sure. Um, so, it takes like an hour to play around with the staff to attune to it. Or um, you could just use it and find out what happens to it. Um or you can identify it through uh, there's an identify spell. I think it's the I think it's I think there's an identify spell. Yeah. I don't know it's if you have it though. Detect magic. I don't. It's, yeah, detect magic. Oh, you do have detect magic. That just lets yeah, you know if, like the school yeah, of magic. Yeah, magic. Yeah, it's um <sighs> I think there's an identify spell specifically. Yeah, identify divination 1 minute. Mm -hmm. It's also ritual for 10 minutes. Yeah. Right. Um, I don't think anyone has it. I could have gotten it, but I did not. <laughs> yeah. I I think that could be something she could do like in the in like the cart ride. If that's possible. What would you like to do? Attune to the staff? Yeah, like that could be something while they're traveling yeah, in the while cart. you're traveling, you can totally attune to the staff. So um you take that. Now getting other weapons and armor, um, the town does not have a lot of shops or anything like that. That's gonna be the hard part for you. Um <clears throat> Sorry, wild magic blew up your stuff. <laughs> um, right. You're good. There is... There is somebody who handles, like, woodcrafting and things like that. Uh, he was the one who built um, the tables and the chairs and it helped build the inn uh, roof. So it would be, like, some weird wood armor? Um, Get a shield. I could at least get a shield, maybe. Like, but that's not gonna help me if I don't have a like an actual weapon to strike. <laughs> we could use the staff. That is true. Oh, and um, I have my great sword because I also have that great axe from. I don't the know magic. if she is able to use a great sword because yeah. I think that requires a certain type of a proficiency. Although she might have the proficiency for it, I'm not sure. Uh, simple weapons all. That's yeah. about all. Mm. And it's a martial weapon, I believe, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, then, yeah, if she can't... Because I was thinking she was at least trying to find some armor, because she's still wearing that nun outfit. Because that's Jazz what she is has. actually also scraping around looking for scale mail or chain mail or something, because his got left on the impounded boat. Yeah, I I'll do have two hand axes and a dagger. If you don't mind, I'd like the dagger at least. Yeah. Okay. I don't know why I dropped two quarter steps in there, but little bag of sand I can give you. <laughs> oh, I don't like um, sand. So I handed the I put the quarter staff in your um inventory. 
Ooh. But I didn't tell you what it does. But um, you can hit things with it for that. Sweetness. Okay. And then I don't know whatever his dagger is that he has. You can grab as well. It's probably, I think it's just a basic dagger, which I already have that in my okay. sheet. So. Is there anything else you'd like to get? Nope. Okay. Um... I uh, just like to get the only mine. reason why I'm saying there isn't like hide armor right now is because all of the cows and, and stuff have all been getting turned into were creatures or getting their blood sucked out of them. So a were cow, yeah, it's, a were uh... bear cow, <laughs> were bear cow. That sounds unnerving. <laughs> it's, a cow, uh, it's a bear that just moves. So it's just the, half half the cross cost half of move. the cost of uh, hide armor is probably going up very high soon. <laughs> Um, also the person who handled making that stuff, like the shoe polish family is no longer, well, no one has seen them in a while. Uh, I just know, like, say would like to get some wine. Some wine. Oh, yeah. You can totally get some wine. What's the cost of wine? He has, he has run out on his way there. <laughs> uh, how much wine are you thinking about getting? Probably enough for two wine sacks. Uh, so are you getting a fine wine or common wine? Oh, definitely fine wine. Definitely fine uh, wine. So <laughs> fine wine will be uh, 10 gold per bottle. Oof. Maybe just the Which one. Which will be bottle. one and a half pounds or something like that. Maybe just the one. Just one, okay. Yeah, it's, it's fairly expensive. Now, common wine is going to be around like two silver pieces. No. So it's it's a, it's a very <laughs> different uh, situation, but it'll take you less to get more drunk, I suppose. All right. He, he's about the tasting. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything else you guys would like to get before you head off? You said we already got rations and stuff, right? Yeah, I would okay, assume you did. So, yeah, uh, I, I think yeah. I'm good. All right. Yeah, yeah. I think you head off on your way. Um, you try to stay along the course. Um, the the priestess kind of like drew you you handed her like a piece of parchment um uh alexei and she kind of like tried to draw you ish she's not very good at drawing so it does not it's very crude um like here's the road and here's kind of like where it is but she doesn't really know so it's like in the forest area in this area so you have a general idea of where you need to travel um but i'm going to need you to roll me a survival to see how quickly you get there, basically, okay. through using these directions. Now, oh. anybody else that would like to aid can also um, roll survival as well. Oof, this is just straight roll. My wisdom is zero. Uh, I will aid I, and blow one of my 20s. Same. Good. Okay. Only one of you would need to, to do that. Um, oh, okay. I roll a two. So <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> All right, then I won't do it. This map is um, terrible. <laughs> so you, you see Alexei kind of going f forward and trotting along and um, taking the road and getting kind of really into some storytelling and, and boisterly, boisterly like telling this tale and, and, and most of you are really into the tale and get so into it that you're not really caring about your surroundings but Gaz you just traveled down this road not two days ago um, and you think that perhaps you're going a little further than you should be, um, as the ladies did say to the northeast, or yeah, northeast. So I, I might have said northwest on accident. Uh, oh no, no, northwest is right, northwest. And um, you you kind of ask uh, Alexei if you can look at the this crude drawing again, the map, and you look over the map, and I you think that perhaps you need to take a left in that. You might need to go back a little bit from this is super hard for an illiterate barbarian but yeah, totally. i did just come this way so i make a little correction with a stabby pointed finger and i set us straight yeah he kind of like points and points that way and you, you're looking at each other he's like no i think we go this way and you're like uh are you sure i just traveled down this road and he's like no i traveled down this road too we go that way Pretty sure. I mean, look, I see that tree. I noticed that tree before. And you kind of just like have this conversation with each other. And then all of a sudden you're like, 
I did see that tree before, and you know what? You're right. And so you kind of you kind of uh, turn your direction, and you head off into the woods. And as you're traveling further into the woods, you get to a point where you don't think the carriage is going to fit anymore. Uh, the trees are very close to one another. Um, they're not as dead as the trees to the south, but it looks as though the corruption may be continuing to sw- to go further on. And as it is fall, the crunchy leaves all along the ground, and the trees themselves are losing their branches or losing their leaves and uh, their branches look a bit barren. You just, like I say, just kind of sitting there quiet, looking around, looking at the horse, looking around, just like, I, I don't want to leave Excelsior here. Horse's name is Excelsior. Excelsior. <laughs> the horse God. Excelsior. <laughs> Ever since that you've ever since that you've had the horse, the horse has actually um, kind of just been in like a better spirit than before. Uh, perhaps you've been feeding it more and feeding it kind of probably nicer food as well. Uh, and actually, you spend time with it. You've pet the horse and talk, and you talk a lot. You've talked a lot to the horse a lot. Oh, of course, yes, I have. Of course. Uh, and, and the <laughs> horse actually has come to really like you as well. A lot of horsing I, around. I don't. <laughs> He likes horsing around. They both were horsing around. I don't want to leave him here by himself. Um, the horse talks to you and says, you might have to hoof it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it doesn't say anything to you. <laughs> just kidding. That's when Boz just can, leaves. <laughs> can the Talking horse, horse, nope. Can the horse by itself fit? But no carriage? Uh, could you take the horse without the carriage? Yeah, you could, without the carriage. Okay. It he would, has no touch could, with the carriage. It could be dangerous for the horse if you carry the horse around with you, but yes, you could. Would it? I don't want to get metagame here, but would Alexei know if it's more dangerous to leave the horse here or take them with him? Looking around, you look at the area that you're in, and you look further deeper into the forest. Uh, roll me, mm, I guess, a nature. Or survival, whichever you prefer. I'm, I'm guessing you're going to prefer nature. Nature. Oh my god. <laughs> the 20. Jesus. Uh, your nature rolls have been on point today. Uh, <laughs> you look back and where you came from looks much nicer. You look like, it looks kind of like an area you would have slept in for a night before you trotted off uh, on your way. Kind of like you'd, you'd go off to the side of the road and kind of stay there and build your camp type of thing. Further down, where where you know you have to go, it looks it looks creepy, um, and you remember looking back at that painting where there were fire elementals. Your horse would probably get one shot by one of those creatures. <laughs> Alexei just looks. He's like looks. He looks, he looks very like upset and not happy about this. So he's yeah. like he sits down. But I, that's not to say you wouldn't take your horse with you. No, I know. Yeah. I just he. he he doesn't want the hurt horse to hurt, but he also doesn't want to leave the horse alone. So he does his, but he kind of like, he kind of like moves the cart more. I'll actually get you a horse. I think I can get you a horse. Uh, it would just be like a riding horse. Yeah. But you well, have that on your he, inventory. Yeah. He, uh, he's not going to take the horse with them, but he's going to find a place where he can put the carriage aside and put the uh, horse aside in a more like off the, like more like, what he would assume be a safer place for the horse. Yeah, you like tie it up on the side of one of the trees or something like that. Give it enough uh, room where it has room to move still. He puts out some food and water for it. Yeah. Um, and you should have a riding horse in your inventory in a moment. Perfect. I think I normally just let you all see everybody's stuff. So uh, name your horse and then... Uh, I will also put Cathanas next to it. Excelsior Cathanas. I can easily see that it is yours. Riding horse. 10 out of 10. Edit. I hope I explode yeah. Excelsior, right? Horses have like 13 HP, so. <laughs> it could get easily one hit by some of the stuff that you guys have gotten hit by. <laughs> um, just a bit smaller horse than level 3 Roxy. What? I said just a bit less health than level three Roxy. Oh. Roxy had like no health starting off. I Aww. cause I 
rather than going with the default setting for cleric, I tried to roll and I rolled horribly. And I think Roxy Ooh. for the longest level time. One eight, had level one characters have like eight HP or like five yeah. HP. It's so sad. It's frightening. Yes. <laughs> you're like sad. your heart is like racing as you're level. That's why I start everyone off at level three because then you feel at least like I've done something with my existence. <laughs> three is so good because you get your archetype there too. Usually, so it's like yeah. you feel. You feel more like, because I always base my characters off the archetype, too. So it's like, I always feel more at home when I'm level three, and then I'm like level one or two. I hate level one or two so much. Yeah, no, I'm with you. Because you're not really, like, you're, it's so homogenous at, like, level one and two. Until you get to three, that's when you really, like, differentiate yourself from yeah. other classes. So I can completely understand that. That's why I started yeah. it there. But also, I, all of you are all different levels, which is kind of a cool concept. So it's, it's yeah. kind of fun. Because um, when I rolled her health and everything, I ended up with only having 16 health. She was really <laughs> weak. Hey, man. RNG just sometimes doesn't go with you. Oh, yeah, um, no. So, so you kind of, like, leave your horse there and get it prepared. You're all watching this as this, this is happening. It does take some time away from your... You, you basically have this clock that's going... Tick-tock, tick-tock, tick-tock. You have three days. <laughs> uh, now you have, like two days and like I don't know it's probably they're all the things you guys did probably 9 a.m. So, yeah hmm. well, I guess um, we should uh, go on and see a druid about a potion yeah we'll have to continue <laughs> on whether we can fit the horse and carriage or not I've, or I've already put him aside and I I'm sorry, buddy. He just kind of like pets the uh, the, the, his, the main some. No, Nate. They actually took the clock off the top of your head. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and it's just ticking. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> he has a clock on the top of his head. <laughs> oh. Not in the form that you saw him in, because he looked like just like a halfling, yeah, uh, wearing a weird jumpsuit. Um, if, but <laughs> if if anything, we can call him a watcher. Oh. <laughs> Oh, nice. <laughs> um, oh, fuck you for that one. Uh, that that was good. As you guys get further and further in the forest, um, Alexei, you continually look back at your horse and you continue to move forward. Um, and you get to a point where you can no longer see um, your horse at all. And you guys continue walking forward. He's a um, straw the entire time, basically. Like you can see, he's very worried about leaving the horse there. He does not like this. <laughs> yeah, it's eerily quiet. You are listening around, and there's not much going on around you other than the slight crunching of leaves beneath your feet as your boots hit them. It's just really quiet. I don't like this. But I'm going to keep the pace with the others. Yeah. But I'm kind of loud, actually. <laughs> yeah. You're like, it's like stop, stop. Stomping on the... On the right. Hey, what was that? Me. Oh, it was me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what was that? Oh, it was me. <laughs> yeah, and you, and you crunch okay. your way through into the forest. And it, as you get further and further, there's this element of fog that kind of rises around... And as you get further and you pass into the fog, um, no longer see behind you or around you, but you can see right in the immediate vicinity of yourselves. And right in front of you is a tiny building. It looks like those buildings that they have where um, in a graveyard, kind of a little um, little house. A mausoleum, like a, if you will. Yeah, like a mausoleum, yeah. But it's very small. There's a single door on it. It's this white um, birch wood looking uh, building and around it is birch wood all around it. So it, it, it looks as though it kind of just hides its way in there. And there's this element of fog that just seems uh, a little odd. Um, and it is surrounding the just the entire radius of this space. And as you get closer and closer, you can see the stairs and the doorway. And you go up and Whoever's first to touch the door goes up to grab the door and jingles the knob, but um, it seems locked. Hmm. Feels you're, locked, you're everyone. Needed, uh, I'd try to just... Hello? 
I'm sorry if, you're, if this is your time off, but we need you, Druid lady. You yell that, and in the meanwhile, uh, Gaz has already rushed forward, smashing the door open is what your plan is. I, I'm not like chopping it apart, here's Johnny style, but I'm seeing if I <laughs> slam down on the handle really hard and throw an elbow, will it just fly open? Okay, um, I would say roll me an athletics check. I still have two 20s, so uh, that's going to be a modified, like, 26 or 27. Oh, no. Yeah, you roll a 20, um, and you you nat 20 that stuff, remove one of your 20s. You rush forward, and you explain to me how you break this door open. So there's this gradually rising crescendo of, oh, the handle doesn't work. Maybe I'll press it a little bit. Oh, pressing it doesn't work. Maybe I'll press it a lot. Maybe I'll press it with both arms, and I can feel it starting to yield a little bit. Uh, this is not just a solid slab going all the way back. There's a couple of hinges in a knob. This is breakable. I've played this game before. Oh, yeah. uh, so I take a couple steps back and then give one final glorious triumphant slam uh, in exactly the right place with all my barbarian bear rage, uh, and the thing just cracks the moving parts, the hinges just fall off, and the door collapses in on itself and off to the side. And as it does that, as the pieces of wood kind of fall to the ground, a, a, like a gust of dust comes flushing into the air, and you just see as like each piece of wood hits the ground, dust comes f flying up, and it almost makes all of you cough. It's, it's a lot. It's an intense moment where like you're just breathing in all this like dust and um as f the final bits fall to the ground and the dust slowly falls back down to the ground you can see within this mausoleum in front of you is a small risen tomb of some sort um it looks like perhaps somebody has pushed it open once or twice before and not that far along um as Areas around are very dusty, but where this wood moved left and right does not seem dusty. Um, to the left and right are small windows that kind of go from one end of the of the building to the to the other end of the building, and they're parallel to each other. Um, and right across from you, there's nothing. There's just one solid wall. Um, and now the door is gone from this room, and that's what you see. Uh, that was very rude. You didn't have. Maybe she was home. You didn't give her enough chance to come to the door. Now we gotta pay for damages, and oh, she doesn't sue. Oh God, sue. Roxy, Roxy's damages. in the back, just face palming. <laughs> She's not even in here. You know, we didn't know that before you crushed the door. It's, she can come back any moment, and oh, this this is a legal nightmare. Well. We're in a hurry. Once we fought off the werebear infection, we can worry about damages. All right. Oh god. Um. So what? So uh, there's no sign that uh, she's here at all, right, Druid? Um. The only thing that I said that might seem like someone has been there before is where the this little tomb uh, kind of rises up out of the ground. Um. The lid of it looks like it's slid and open and closed recently, but it's currently like, closed. Alexei's gonna want to get a, he's gonna look up at that t the, uh, the tomb area and just kind of like uh, examine it a little. Yeah, and roll me an investigation. Anyone else is welcome to roll an investigation if you wish. Oh, uh, I feel momentarily shamed. I won't investigate. Oh, <laughs> uh, I'll investigate too, but. That burns a natty 20. There you go. You have like 40 of them, don't you? Yep. Yeah, I am now at 38. <laughs> oh my god. How do you have yeah. so I'm so confused by it. Someone system. donated to them so they had that many. Okay. That's uh, okay that's also, uh, Jin Devil, thank you so much. I miss this because uh, I'm so into what's happening right here. Thank you for the 20 months, 21 months of support to the Space Viking fleet. I really appreciate it. Uh, with a 10 investigation, um, I'll say what you know first, and then I'll say what Roxy realizes. Um, with the 10, you, you're looking around, you're looking up and down, and kind of examining the area. 
Um, it seems like perhaps this is where a body was kept. Um, that's normally what happens in these places. Um, that, so that's not a thing that you would need to necessarily a tell body anybody. Was kept here. <laughs> uh, you you kind of without. I'm guessing you're not opening the lid, but you're just examining everything. Yeah, just examining like carefully. Yeah, if you examine around, it looks as though um, this the lid has definitely been slid open recently. But everything around doesn't look like anyone has messed with much around the, the surrounding areas of it. Now, with Roxy, as um, Alexa is doing that, you you kind of examine the, examine it a little further, and on top of the lid of the of the tome, there are some symbols on it, um, and it seems like it says um, a father. A son and a good man and uh, it looks like a family crest above it or on, on like above the words um, on the lid of it and um, there's like a date but it's a little bit it's been there for a long time so you can't really see the date of the lifespan of this person um, and you do see the same thing that Alexei saw which was this is definitely this lid has definitely been opened and opened recently. Just because, like I said, I don't like to uh, be like Medi Amy stuff. But like, does Alexi would Alexi notice the uh, emblem as well, the family emblem? No. Ah. Okay, That's so what your I'm ten was for yeah. your investigation. Yeah. Okay. And while they're all in there, until, I think until that... Roxy like says something about it, then you all will recognize okay. it, obviously. Because I was gonna have Alexei roll see if he knew the uh, family crest because you know he had studied all the, like families and stuff. And I think that Boz is like watching the outside while everyone's investigating in there, making sure like nobody sneaks up or anything like that. Yeah, his eyes are a little puffy from crying the other day or earlier <laughs> in the morning. <laughs> Alexei takes his rapier out and just kind of like pokes the uh, the tomb. Uh, Roxy's probably gonna use her quarter staff and slap slap the rapier to get him to stop. Just like stop it. Just wanted this to is... see if it moved. He puts it back. It's weird to do something like this to someone's tomb. It's been it's been moved. I wanted to make sure that nothing could happen to us at a distance. Regardless, but whoever this was seems to have been important. She kind of points out the family symbol to them. Now, can I check to see if he knows who the family symbol? Yeah. Okay. Would it be uh, history? Yeah, it'll be a history check. Nope. <laughs> um, you've seen a lot of family crests before, but this one you have not seen before, and it's probably because it it it's a local. Pr- person here and you are from very far away did the person who had that uh, hood on with the crest on it was it the same kind of crest roll me an investigation i guess that would be yeah that makes the most sense 21 oh. you look at it and yeah it might be the same same emblem i saw someone at the strangely not named inn um, the flip that, fill in. The flip fill, okay. Flip fill in that had a similar emblem on their, uh, on the lapel of their coat. Hmm. Well. We don't, have, we don't have time to go back and find them. Could it have been the druid? Did we just miss her? Oh, no. Oh, this is not. Oh, no. Ro- Roxy just has, like, an expression of just worry when you say that. <laughs> This, oh god. <laughs> he's like kind of like, kind of having a small breakdown because he's worried about his horse and now he thinks they missed the entire and he's like, is the horse gonna die because we have no reason? Oh no. Um so I do we want to wait for the druid? Do we want to go go back? What this I don't really know what to do here. I did Caitlin, we give Boz one of her stones of sending. Um, she did, I believe so. Yeah, for communication. Yeah, yeah. 
weird communications. <laughs> yes, she did. Hmm. I think she got uh, four of them, so she would have given them one to each of you. Yeah. Uh, Although she kept using them, like, when she was right next to you. <laughs> <laughs> Walkie-talkie, you know? If uh, She if was that... basically, like, Snake, like Metal Gear Solid. So know. it was, she was <laughs> using her nice. comms, like, the whole entire time. It was great. Uh, so if Boz gave that to um, Alexei, uh, would he be able to send a message with it to the person that he saw? No, that's not how sending stones work. Okay. Um, how those specifically work is for her to send you a message. Oh, okay. Yeah. Annoyingly. But yes. <laughs> she can send you a message up to 25 words or something like that. Hmm. So, I specifically allowed it so that one that one stone was linked to all four of those so she could send you guys four Okay. Messages, yeah. Which normally is not how they work. They normally work one stone to one stone, but I was like, oh. it made it was cute. It made sense for her character. <laughs> and someone donated twenty dollars for it, so Yeah. She likes Metal Gear a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. It was it was pretty good. It was fun. So um did I can't mean of course I can't remember. What was did she say the druid's name or is there she no did name not. Okay. She didn't know the druid's name. Well, you didn't ask that question, actually. Oh, oh no! <laughs> you didn't. Mean, you didn't ask. No, I know. Yeah, no, that's very true. Oh, no. And honestly, Alexei probably would not have asked because he got too distracted. So, um, he didn't introduce his own name until after after like going into the group and insulting people. <laughs> so, <laughs> Roxy was so worried about himself. She didn't think of it either. Yeah. I was outside crying. <laughs> <laughs> For horrible investigators. I think Gaz was actually crying too, but for different reasons. Yes, I was moved by sympathy and remembrance <laughs> of song, not by the chaos magic table. Um, we are so terrible. So, I mean, it's your all's friend. I'm just here for the ride. So, do you all want to do you want to wait here, or do you want to try to find this druid? Do you want to go back and see if I can find the person who had the emblem? Or it's it's up to you all. I don't I don't want to be, you know, the person who accidentally makes your friend not back into a human or whatever they happening. He's he's a Goliath. I'm acting too. No, he's very small. He's not he's not tall. He's not he's not massive. It's a very small happening. I mean, he was right there. He's he's a Goliath. <laughs> that is the smallest Goliath I have ever seen. He did, it didn't even like it was. He must have really good makeup. Like it just you couldn't tell. It was oh, I must know how he did that. <laughs> <laughs> you broke. You broke that priest. He's <laughs> like I can't even. <laughs> I just I just want to be like oh honey that's not how this works but he's just like. <laughs> You could, say that to, you could say that to him. Rocky spends through some shit. She knows things. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, that's make. That's not dear. That that's not makeup at all. That's it's magic. <laughs> that makes more sense because it would be. I don't see how makeup can make a person shorter. But you don't, don't really he, get out much, do you? No, He's not really. No. Off. I read a whole lot, but I have read about Goliaths and all that, but I didn't think they were so small in person. <laughs> yeah, Roxy's you, just done. She just walks about off. Them, and they're normally like seven, eight, nine, nine feet tall. They're, they're yeah. tall. Does he, does he have a, an affliction to make him shorter? Apparently this town just wants to make him short. I don't know what's going on. Roxy just kind of walks off. Just so confused. <laughs> yes. You're walking off, Roxy? Yeah, she she's done. So she's just Roxy so done with this. Roxy walks out of the mausoleum and uh, Baz is, is standing out there watching guard. Are, Gaz, are you also standing outside guarding? Yes. Game? Roll me a perception, Alexi, since you're the only one in there. Ooh. Ooh this is going to go bad. 
Perception. It's not a nat one. Oh! 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 What were you saying? <laughs> oh my god, you have a zero? This is like yeah. RNG wanted this to happen. Alexi, as you're standing there and you see Roxy kind of like look at you and then like shake her head and look down and walk away. Just like walk away from you. <laughs> she just couldn't even like finish <laughs> co the conversation that you were having with her as you just asked her like 10 questions in a row and she had no an like she looked as though she was about to answer you and then she was like and she just walks away. And I was like, oh god, I can't handle as this. As she leaves, <laughs> as she walks out the door, the mi the doorway where the door is missing and steps over the planks of wood. At first you hear something and you think it's her stepping on the planks of wood. But no, you hear something coming from down within the tomb. It sounds like thinking. Um, shuffling. There's definitely movement. He just looks down. And thank you so much for Tempo for the raid. Welcome to all of you who are joining us. We are currently playing Dungeons and Dragons for the kids at St. Jude, where we are raising money. We're, I believe we're almost at $7,000 for the kids at St. Jude, which is just insane. Um, you can donate by doing exclamation point St. Jude on the right here. And you can affect our game. $1 or, or $5 allows you to give someone an inspiration. Make sure you tell me who you want that to go to, otherwise I will decide. $10 gives them a natty one or a natty 20. Make sure you let us know which of those you're don donating for and who you'd like to supply it to, otherwise I will decide. Uh, $15 allows you to create a ma wild magic and believe me, it's wild and crazy. They roll a 1d 10,000 to find out what happens. It's great. Uh, and $20 creates a magic item that appears for the players, which is always fun and exciting. We actually have a character who is missing a lot of gear, so it would be very helpful for Roxy, who exploded because of wild magic at one point and lost all her gear. Uh, $30 for a threat. It does not always mean a monster appears, but something dangerous or of that sort. Right now, we are tuned in as uh, the three uh, characters are standing outside. We have Baz and Gaz <laughs> standing guard as Roxy no has just kind of rushed out of the, the mausoleum, which is this like tiny building where there's a tomb in there with a uh, writing on it and an emblem. And uh, Alexei has just heard something. At first, not thinking it was something from within the tomb, but upon listening further... There's definitely some noises coming from within the tomb. He just looks down and, and uh, inside the. He looks down inside the opened mm -hmm. tomb. Does he see anything? Are oh, you yet? opening it? No, he looks down. He says it's kind of cracked, right? Oh, it's not opened. Oh, None of you have open. opened it. It's closed. Um. Like, you the stone is cracked and crumbled, but it's not, like, open so you can see it. But it looks like as though someone has opened and closed it recently. Like, no, I mean, like, say, he would open it. He would. Yeah. Uh, you guys all hear as Alexi uh, pushes this stone, the top of the of the tomb, and it, it makes that, you know that sound of st stone? I can't make it myself. Some people are really good at making sounds. I'm not. They make that sound of stone scratching on stone and pushes it aside, and it's got this heavy weight to it. Um, do roll me a athletics or acrobatics to push this because it is quite heavy. <laughs> oh, wow. Jesus, what is happening? You rolled 20, like so many 20s today. Woo! <laughs> Gee, oh my god, I, you're like, like the opposite of me. Day. I'm like, Who I'll just roll one. Yeah, <laughs> Who it's did you say? Are you the one sacrificing the children? No, uh, <laughs> you the push. Generous <laughs> you were very excited to come to this town for danger. Um, you push it aside with, with, at first it was heavy, but upon the excitement and the adrenaline of finding something new, which is what drives you to, to go on these adventures and, and, and tell the stories, you just push through it with excitement as you slowly open it. And the further you open it, you can see that there's a stairway down below and you, you excitedly push it the rest of the way. And it looks as though... There's a long stairway that goes all the way down. You have to like climb into the tomb, and as you, if you climbed into the tomb, you could go down, but it looks dark. Um, and as you make this loud noise, you hear 
more shuffling. I mean, I, you already rolled a 20. I'm not going to make you roll again for the perception. You you hear some more shuffling and it sounds like someone's doing something down below and then silence. Hello? I'm sorry we barged in. Are you, are you the druid lady? You hear nothing. You might hear the faint sound of Boz's mask hitting the the side of the mausoleum out there as he just goes. Yeah. Guys, I found some stairs. <laughs> further down. He's like he's yelling, I'm even walking out. Stairs. Yes, yeah, it's that. It's that, rushes back in. It's the tomb that I tried to open before that. Uh, the uh, you what? <laughs> yeah, open the tomb. I heard noises, so I open the tomb up. But yeah, as you all look over, there is a staircase um, leading down from this tomb. You never heard of secret staircases being hidden in tombs? It's in lots of novels. I can't read. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> the I war cry. Read. Let's go. <laughs> Best That's war cry ever. I you. can't read. <laughs> now here's go. my question for you all. Do you want to continue or would you like us to stop here and come back next week? Um, we can still play on Thursday next week because uh, my other campaign doesn't actually start till September. Because um, I know I was saying I was going to move it to Tuesdays. Um, so we could play and, re- and we could continue the journey down into the tomb next week. Or... I will be at Gen Con on Thursday, but I can stand guard outside and someone else can hop in and I can just silently follow everyone back to town. <laughs> you can do that. Or um, we can play for another hour if you're interested in that. I just don't know. I don't want to I'm fine with people either. into that time. I'm fine with either. My soft vote would be to go to bed, but I could stay up for another hour if everyone else wanted to. Uh, I could probably do another hour or so. Are you sure? When I don't want to keep you if, if you're really tired. No, let's do it. Screw it. I don't have anything scheduled tomorrow. <laughs> okay. I just want <laughs> to make sure. It, is, th- it would be another hour, I think, to, to right, wrap up the this area. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you guys spent so much time outside. I thought you were going to leave, and I was like, oh, my God. They're going to leave, and they're not going to open the tomb. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to at least smack my, I, my fear away. No, you guys are playing your characters perfectly, and it makes so much sense. And Roxy hates dead bodies, so she probably just wouldn't want you to open it for that reason. Also, because it's rude to touch people's graves. Um, but <laughs> it would have been so Defiling funny. graves is a no-no. That is a big no-no. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What is the order that you would like to go down to, into this grave? It is going to be single file. Uh, I think Boz would opt to go first. So if no one opted to go first, then Alexei, would have, out of sheer excitement, would have went first. No one else would have said, I'm going first. So Baz is going to go first. Who else would like to go? Uh, Baz will probably... follow Baz. Baz and Gaz. So we have Baz, Gaz. Yes. We have Alexei next. Alexei and then Roxy. Reluctantly. Yeah. Also, before we go down there, I'm going to go up to Alexei and just kind of give him like a tap on the head with the quarter staff. Like, don't do that again. There was noises. It sounded hollow. 